Hello, so today's video is going to be on the S10 versus the M40 versus the PMK1. So it's basically going to be a comparison between Britain, America and the Soviet Union's sort of 80s or 90s gas mask that was, you know, designed to be the cutting edge mask. Now, you already call me an Avon fanboy, but you know that I like the S10 the most out of these masks. The M40 is also very good, but has a few features I don't really like on it. And the PMK is kind of awful. So, what I'm going to do is show you all the masks, show you the things they do right, show you the things they do wrong, and we can have a look at some of the features, all of a kind of similar design of mask, but all of them vary slightly. Um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on the satchels, most of them either use uh, Velcro or uh, buttons or poppers, whatever you want to call them, to seal up. The S10 satchel is in actual camouflage though, but I don't know if um, the M40 and the PMK1 also had camouflage satchels. Because I know some, some S10s just come in sort of plain green satchels as well. So um, let's get the masks out and have a look at them. So here are the three masks from left to right. Avon S10 or British S10. Um, the Scott, or uh, whichever company made it, MSA, Scott, any of those. So the USM40 respirator or protective mask. And then on the right, the PMK1, Soviet um, sort of gas mask respirator from this period. Now, I've said before, which is quite controversial and a lot of people got upset over it, that I think the PMK is designed to be a copy of the M40. And lots of people said, no, 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 you're wrong, because the PMK came out in the late 1980s when the M40 came out in the 1990s. However, the prototype XM40, which was obviously known about, was around in the early 80s. So, um, you know, it's hard to say, but personally, I think design-wise, um, the PMK1 does seem to be a copy of the M40, which just does a few things differently and sort of badly. Um, so let's look at the masks anyway. So um, what we'll do first is show the masks in a bit of detail and then we'll look at um, you know like some of the accessories they may have come with and everything else. Um, obviously the um, PMK1 on the right is actually in Ghost um, rather than the other two which are 40mm NATO. Um, all of these I have designed for right handed shooters so the filter always goes on the left cheek of the mask although yeah, I think each of these masks has a left handed variant if you specifically wanted one. Um, so we'll go into that. Um, all of the masks have outserts on as well. Now I'll sh take the S10 outserts off in a moment because S10 outserts actually t go on and off really easily which is nice. Um, the PMK and uh, USM40 both have outserts where you have to kind of peel the outserts off and then invert the rubber on them to put them back on. Um, which means they're probably more secure on the mask, but they are slower to take on and off. So, um, yeah, let's look at the masks in a bit more detail. So, let's start with the Avon S10, and as I've already said, this is my favourite of the masks, so you can call me an Avon fanboy all you like, but I do really like the S10. Now, the reason I like the S10 so much is it's kind of simple in a way. It's well built, but it's simple. Um, and I like the FM12 even more than the S10 because it's kind of, you know, just an improved S10. Um, but let's look at some of the features. So I said, if you have the outserts with it, they clip on and off very easily. As you can see, that's an outsert taken off. It still needs a bit of force so it won't just fall off. So we've got an outsert on and an outsert off. Now to put the outserts back on, all you have to do is just push that. Thanks, phone. The call has been dealt with. But, um, anyway, yeah, the outserts on the S10 are nice and simple, basically. With a bit of force, you can pull them off. With a bit of force, they just clip back on. You just kind of, you know, push all around the lens, the outsert, and it clips on. Um, a brilliant system. You know, I don't see how you couldn't think that's, you know, bad. So, um, or you couldn't, you know... I don't see how you could think that's bad, because um, I always trip over my words doing these. So the mask itself is actually pretty lightweight and simple. Um, obviously you've got your 14mm filter, as I said, on the left side by default. Um, what you've also got, which I will take off in this video, this is more difficult to take off, is that's where you've got your primary XL valve under this cover. Um, this is normally known as the voice trumpet, because this plastic ring here is designed so your voice is actually louder. As you can see, the drinking tube uh, goes into the mask there, and there's the lever for adjusting the drinking tube. Um, and this is obviously the actual sort of design for the thing. So let's just get that back the way it's meant to go, if I remember how that goes. I think it's that way. There we go, that's back on. Um, so on this side, you've got 
the like other sealed up filter port. Now that has a very small bo uh, voice diaphragm in it, so what you can do is you can attach a radio microphone to there so other people can hear you clearly over the radio even when you've got a mask on rather than going mm -hmm -hmm on, you know, on the radio. Um, the straps on, um, I'll just show you the inside of the mask quickly. That's what it looks on the inside. As you can see, nice simple design, oral nasal cup to stop it fogging up. Now the straps um, I quite like on the S10, some people don't, but basically the S10 straps are ones where you adjust them prior to using the mask um, and then they stay in the right position and you never have to adjust them again. So how they work is each strap has a plastic clip. You prise open the clip, you adjust the strap to how you want it to fit you, um, and then how it works is each strap, as you can probably see, has a bit of stretch to it. So you've got the mask, you know, tight enough that when you've got the mask on, it will make an airtight seal. Then you, the ma uh, you know, it will stretch enough that you can take the um, mask on and off without having to adjust the straps ever again to fit your head. You know, that's a brilliant design. So let's um, put the mask on. I'm going to do this the wrong way as usual, but I like putting the S10 on this way. You put it on your head, pull it down. There we go. A little bit of adjustment to the straps, not to tighten them or anything, just to you know get the harness in the right place. And we're good to go. So, as you can see, the S10 doesn't fog up. It's got a good field of view. It's not too heavy. It's quite lightweight. The mask itself is actually made from butyl rubber, so it's very chemical resistant. It doesn't need a second skin or anything like that. But as I said in other videos, you've got the radio. If you want to clip that onto the mask, that would just clip on the radio microphone. That is, that would just clip on that side. There you go. Then you can attach the S10 to a microphone. Um, you know, well, that's the microphone. You can attach it to a radio communicator. And if you did want to, you can get flash hoods and chemical hoods and everything like that to go over the mask anyway. So, you know, it's not like you can't get that equipment for it. So. There you go, that's the Avon S10. As you know, I really like this mask. You, as I said, you can call me an Avon fanboy if you want to, but I don't see why liking good products makes me a fanboy. You know, if every company made masks of this quality, I would be very happy. So, that's the Avon S10. So, that's my favourite of these three. And you can probably see why, judging by the features. Now, let's go to the M40. So here is the American M40 respirator. So as you can see, it's actually a mask with a mask on it, because when they made the mask, they made it out of silicon, because it's like one of the most comfortable rubbers. However, the issue is with silicon is that it's not very chemical resistant. So that means that you actually, you know, need more protection on it for it to work. So it's got a six point head harness with straps, and it's got these very basic strap systems where you literally, you know, adjust it one way to tighten it, tighten it the other way to loosen it. They're elasticated straps as well, so that means they've got a bit of stretch like the S10 straps. However, I found with these, I do tend to need to loosen them to get the mask off properly. Um, so, other than the second skin, inside the mask is very similar to an S10, um, you know, because it's just basically that same layout inside. The drinking tube on this mask, I've not found a way that you can manipulate it from the um, outside of the mask, which is a problem. At least on the S10 you've got that lever, so you can move it, even if not very well. This one you can't seem to do that. Um, the drinking tube is there. Um, it uses the standard American drinking tube system, the M17 had, um, that we all notice in a minute the PMK has copied. Um, so, we will get to that in a moment. Um, so... XL valve at the bottom here, voice diaphragm there. Like the S10, it's got a sealed off um, thing on the other side. I don't know if you can get radio equipment to collect, uh, connect to that. I imagine you probably could. Um, and outserts on here. As you said, I'm not going to take these off, but they're the ones that you have to prise on and off. You can watch my M40 video to see the outserts uh, separately. So let's get this one on. So obviously I've fully loosened the strap, so let's put my chin in. The mask, just get both the masks on my head, not just the one. Get that harness down, and then um, I'll start tightening the straps. strap here that doesn't want to tighten which is always great might be because I'm not quite gripping the right bit there we go 
and then the two top straps if I can get at them. Right, there we go. So, this mask is now on. So, in terms of comfort, very similar to the S10. It feels a bit heavier on the face to me. Now, as I said before, one of the things I don't like with this mask is the drinking tube keeps creeping its way into my mouth. So at least you can get it in your mouth, but it does make talking annoying where you have to keep spitting out a drinking tube every sort of 30 seconds. Field of view, I would say, is not quite as good as the S10. It's certainly not bad, you get a good field of view, but I do think you can see a little bit more probably down and up with the S10 due to have it round lenses. I've not tried this mask with rifle scopes yet, so I don't know how well it would work with iron sights and scopes, but I have tested that of the S10 and it does work well. But for all accounts and purposes, the M40 is perfectly serviceable and actually quite a good mask. Um, you know, because it is, it does do all the features you'd want from a mask, it's just some of them are done in a bit of a strange way. Drinking tube in my mouth again. As said, um, you know, what the main issue I have with the M40 is that the, you have to have the second skin on it if you want it to be more chemically resistant. Because if you don't have the second skin on, the actual mask itself, um, you know, isn't good enough to resist certain chemicals, which isn't great. Now, what I'm going to do in all the videos is when I've got the masks on and I'm actually talking, I'm not going to um, amplify the volume. So you should be able to hear how clear some of the different voice diaphragms are. Um, so yeah, the audio will not be normalised in each of the videos when I've actually got the mask on, just so you can get a good idea of how clear the voice sounds with nothing boosting the volume. Okay, so now for the PMK1. So again, this is set up in a similar way to the M40. You've not got another XL valve on that, this side. This one was made in 1986. Um, you've got your voice diaphragm in the middle. You've got your drinking tube. And again, notice the drinking tube is a copy of an American one, just to um, point that out. You've got your XL valve there pointing downwards. Um, you've got your two lenses similar to the M40s with outserts on. Um, you know, triangular lenses. That's the mask on the inside. As you can see, quite similar to all of the other ones. Um, there's not a proper oral nasal cup in this, um, just to point that out. Um, this, this is one of the big flaws of the mask. Um, it looks like there's an oral nasal cup, but it's actually just the mask is shaped that way. So when you've got it on, it fogs up quite quickly unless you put paste in. Now, there's a couple of things I really don't like with this mask. One is how floppy it is. Notice that. Um, the mask doesn't hold its own shape very well. Um, which is not a good thing. Um, the other thing is I really don't like this rubber kind of inner mask thing. The idea is that your chin sits in that bit and, you know, it holds to your face. The problem is I found it doesn't quite, you know, sit to my face as I'd like it to. Um, another thing to point out is that, before I forget what I was actually going on about, the straps I don't like. Um, these are not quick and easy to adjust straps at all. You basically have to completely take the mask off, get them exactly as you want them, and then leave them there. It's not like the S10 ones where you just literally flick something up to adjust the strap and then clasp it closed again. No, you have to very slowly work them through these um, kind of buckles to get them to the right length. So um, that's not great. It's five point head harness as well, which means it is slightly inferior. Again, I'm not massively fussed on five versus six point head harnesses on masks. If you use the exact same quality straps on each, a six point would be slightly better. But it generally comes down to the design of the straps themselves. So let's get the mask on. Um, I am going to be using an original PMK1 filter in this video. Um, so yes, this may well contain asbestos. Um, but the good thing about these filters compared to GP5 filters is if you look at the top, they've not got cotton wool to block everything in. There is actually a proper particulate filter. So these would be safer to use in comparison. So let's get this put on and everything. Okay, so that's this mask on. This is probably the lightest of all three masks, um, but not the most comfortable, for obvious reasons. Now, at least the metal joint there stops this filter pulling down too much. 
Now, the voice diaphragm, if I remember right, is actually quite good on this, so I think when we review the footage we'll find that this mask is actually quite clear to hear what people are saying on it. Um, again, the drinking cube, you can manipulate it into your mouth a bit using this bit. So, um, this drinking tube system isn't awful, but the um, actual connectors and everything aren't that great on these. So I wouldn't really recommend them. Um, the XL valve thing, you can aim to be in a different direction if you wanted it to be. Um, and it just literally screws on and off. And as you can see, there's your XL valve there. So this is just kind of an angular thing with a second valve in it. Just to make the mask a bit more secure and so you can have the, um, you know, your breath not... I can actually connect that again without taking the mask off and doing it. I can never remember if these are the ones that tighten. Yeah, they tighten up when you turn them left because they're in the opposite direction. So as you can see, it's already fogging up, which is not great. The S10 and M40 do not fog up because they've got um, you know an oral nasal cuff in. This thing hasn't. The idea is, I think, that it's meant to sit close enough to your face here that it can't fog up, but it doesn't actually do that in reality because of the mask being made from a flexible material and the weight of the filter pulling it away to one side slightly. So there's always that, which isn't great. So yeah, it's fogging up as you can see. My field of view is actually cut down a bit because of these um, bits of rubber there. If they were more trimmed at the sides, I'd get a better field of view, but I can't actually see to the exact edges of the thing because the rubber from the side of the mask is getting in the way. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of this mask, basically just for the reason that it tried to be too western and the quality control on it wasn't good. Now, this is one that actually works. However, my GP7 um, has a really bad filter thread thing. So, on the GP7, which is like the civilian version of a PMK1, um, it's you can't put even GOSS filters in it properly, because whoever at the factory made it, they didn't care it wasn't quite cut right or whatever so filters don't thread in properly so it's kind of a useless mask unless you replace that part that like said not a big fan of this thing I've seen worst masks out there but I really don't like this the thing is the simpler Soviet master helmet style ones like the SHMS or the PMG2 they were actually better masks because they had less features but they just did everything very well so there you go that's the three masks in this video um, I literally rank them in the order I do them, S10 being the best, um, M40 being a pretty close second, I just think the S10 is better in several ways, and then this thing being last. Um, obviously, America now uses the Avon M50, so um, they have bought an Avon mask now, um, along with a lot of other countries, except for Britain, although I think Britain now is having to go, oh shit, we uh, made a bad choice with that Scott GSR, better go to the um, M50, like we originally planned to. But yeah. I think this mask is the winner just simply because it's lightweight, it's built very solidly, it's got that right amount of flex in it where it isn't too squidgy or too firm. Um, you know, like I said, the strap system is great because it's literally, you get the straps how you want them and then they're fixed there and you never have to think about adjusting them again. But it's easier to do that than with the, um, you know, PMK1. You've got an oral nasal cup in so it obviously doesn't fog up. You can attach radio equipment to the mask. You know, there's not really any reason to not like this mask and it's fairly comfortable for what it is. As I said, the Avon um, FM12 is better than the S10, I'm not going to deny that, um, but for looking at masks that came out in the same period I think the S10 is the best of these masks.